And three, two, one, boom. And we are back with another episode of Scratch Gamers. This episode brought to you by Zen Real Clothing Co. Um, check out the free playlists on Zen Real Radio via zenrealclothingco.com. And if you want to, pick up some tees and or accessories. Use the code SGPODCAST at... It's SGPODCAST, right? Yeah, I'm sure it's SG, SG Podcast, or check out the description uh, for 20% off select items. Okay, this is uh, your Socratic Dialogue. This week we're talking about the Age of Enlightenment, which I find that we're, we're really experiencing now more than ever due to COVID. Um, so, so prior to this, but before the internet, essentially what the Age of Enlightenment is, is the ubiquity of the internet to spread information. Mm-hmm. Right. And like um, I was watching like some Zac Efron like interviews about like uh, the Ted Bundy thing. You know, he shot that movie about Ted Bundy. No. Oh, you didn't know that? Oh, OK. So like uh, so Zac Efron, he he shot this like movie about Ted Bundy and it's on Netflix. And um, so essentially during that time, a lot of killings like 1969 and stuff. Right. A lot of people got away with stuff. You know, right. like a lot of conspiracies happened, et cetera, et cetera. But like because of the, the Internet, we're able to find information, but also like negative information, I guess, because remember, I was like sending you all those headlines and then you sent me that run, really funny comment back. You're like, you're like, stop reading just the headlines. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. Right. But it's like that is kind of the world where we're, we're inundated with so much information. Mm-hmm. And it's like almost a good thing and a bad thing. But it's yeah, like how you wield it, you know? Are yeah. you gonna say something? Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's I think that's what we we have talked about, like how the internet there's you can fall into the black hole of bad information. Yeah, to- totally. So so okay, so no, another part of this. So I was watching uh, uh not not watching, I was listening to this podcast, uh Tinfoil Hat Comedy or the Tinfoil mm-hmm. Hat. And um it's it's Eddie Bravo and Sam Tripoli. And they're talking about conspiracies and they have all these people on there. And I'm like, okay, some of this seems real, but like how Joe Rogan always says, like, if it's like a coconut, you can't eat the outside, but the inside's really healthy for you. Right. It's like, you have to right. pick out the nuggets of information. Cause they were talking to like Bigfoot, like demons from alternate realities and stuff. And I'm like, if you, or like flat earth for a good example. And like, if you actually yeah. believe in all this stuff, you know, this, this could also be bad. You know, right, right, yeah. But but like, again, you wouldn't have known about like all this Jeffrey Epstein Island stuff, you know, or mm-hmm. like, uh, you ever hear of PizzaGate? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so like stuff like that. So like, is like, it's there and it's readily accessible, but it's also like a bad thing, you know. I I don't really like it. It's like a double-edged sword, you know? You can learn a lot, but at the same time, you know, you can go down the wrong rabbit holes if you don't read books and you just watch, like, YouTube videos all the time. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So, of course, there is conspiracies that are legitimate, and there are conspiracies that are just there to throw people off kind of thing, right? Right, right, and, right, yeah. And it, what, tend to, what tends to happen is you just it becomes all under one category. Right, if, I see what you're saying. It's the conspiracy right. category, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, but you really got to, like, you know, dwell through what is actually true and what's not. It, it makes, so that's what people don't do. To- I, I totally agree. And it makes me think of, like, um, the the big short, you know? So, like, yeah. if the 2008 uh, crisis, the bubble that happened, if people had heard about that prior, they'd be like, no, this is not real. No, that's a conspiracy, you know? But then it comes right. out as a movie and, and like they have all these like, books on it and you're like, oh, that actually did happen. Or like um, American Made, another example, like how the Clintons were associated with like drug trafficking through Arkansas, you know, and they put it out yeah, in that yeah. movie. But yeah. it's like, it's a conspiracy when you first hear about it. You're like, no, this, there's no way that's happening, you know? Yeah, I, yeah. Again, it also is what's a catchy headline and that tends to be what people remember versus what's necessarily in the in the article right 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 like you could say i connected with bill clinton but it was a bit different than that because it was through different administrations it was just like we can't 
um, charge the guy because it'll just show bad on us. Right. right totally. Totally. Yeah. Ex- exactly. Exactly. Have Have yeah. you ever? Um, so there's this thing. Uh, it's called like negative source bias. And what it is, is it's a marketing trick where you'll put out wrong information and people will remember the information, but not the source. So like, you're like, oh, Oprah Winfrey killed someone, right? Yeah. And then you'll remember Oprah Winfrey killed someone, but then you're like, wait, where did I hear that? Yeah, right. right you know what yeah. I mean? And then it just becomes like normal like it's like those tabloids, you know, like when when you put out those tabloids and they're like fake news, but then like you tell somebody about it and then it, they don't ask where the source came from. And then like it just propagates. Yeah, throughout that society. tends to happen. Actually, that's, that's also another thing, because you tend to believe your friends. Right, totally. Yeah, 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 that's true. Yeah. 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 And that tends to what ha- that's ten- that tends to how this kind of like spreads. Right, because they're like, no, this one person told me I trust him, or like, you know what I mean? Like, right. It, it it's like uh, it's like when you're buying something, right? You you trust uh, word of mouth, right? Right. Yeah. And then it, yeah. that that increases the legitimacy of what it is that you're you're looking at. Uh, so it's funny, you know how I reposted that thing about like Lex Friedman and Elon Musk, and then like Lex Friedman liked it. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Then, then all these people started commenting like, "Oh, don't give him support." And I was like, "It's a weird time. Like, it's like weird synchronicity." So I had just watched that interview and I cut it up and I was putting it online. And then like, Elon Musk has all this like negativity towards him at that same day because he wrote like "Free America Now." <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're right. And then like somebody like commented like, "Oh, don't give him credit." And then like it was like "Free America Now." I was like, "What is this guy talking about?" And then I went on the page. And I'm like, "Okay, so you just said Free America Now." It's like you don't really get the context within like 240 characters, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, yeah. So it's like, he could have just been trolling again, like, do you know his character, et cetera, et cetera. And then um, Lex Friedman, he posted this other thing, like, it was obviously a troll. It was like a picture of Elon Musk on an eagle, and he's like, this just in, Elon Musk, like, championing freedom for America while riding an eagle, something like that. And I was like, yeah. I was like, oh, this is like obviously a troll, but then like other people will not see it as a troll. You know what I'm no, saying? Yeah. So it's so that that's another thing. It's like we can't really get sarcasm or trolling online and then people misread it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's that's one of the one of the biggest issues too with like Twitter is a lot of things is just sarcasm and people read it as like it's a true fact from them or something. Right, and, totally. Yeah. And then that's how like Elon has been getting a lot of hate for just like three words or two words that he put out. Yeah. And then if you're really but if you do delve into it, I do get what he's doing. And in a way, it is affecting businesses. Right. That's the one thing. you have No, to I, I it, totally I, I agree with it. it too. Makes, yeah. He's saying like there's a with with um, there is trolling. Yes. With with Elon. But there is partial truths to what he's saying. Right. Um, no, no. I, I agree. I agree. Right. And and I wonder like too because we're so like, we're so people like, are just surface level. That's that's my issue with that. Yeah, like, yeah you really, totally. Yeah, 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 yeah sur- surface level. Um, it's weird how like we're so divided now. Like, if you, so like okay, so the greatest example is like Trump, right? So it's like people like either love him or hate him. But you can't yeah. you can't pick and choose. Like you can't be like oh he did something good there, he did something bad there. You know, and like, mm-hmm. I think that's what like humans have to understand is it's like, there are so many faces to a coin or oh, there's only two faces to a coin, but like, there's so <laughs> many, like, there's so many like dualities, you know, and yeah, it's like, yeah. if you just choose one side, then you're living incomplete. You know what I'm saying? Right. Actually, it's really funny. There's this, uh, there's a person who like messaged me like so much hate. Um, if you're listening to this, shout out to you. You know who you are. Uh, but, but like so much hate about like this game I'm playing. And I'm like, and I messaged back, like, I was like, all right, that's cool. It's cool. Yeah. Okay. A bunch of like messages, whatever. And then like, then I kind of just like, was like, oh, you're game? Uh, Final Fantasy seven. Really? A lot of hate? Oh. Yeah, yeah. From this person, but they hadn't played it. Right. Oh, like, okay. oh, you're wasting your time, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, you're hating. eh? And then like. <laughs> And then that, like, and then I said something about, like, you know, watch your thoughts because that becomes your actions, which become your character, you know, some right. some basic, like, Buddha stuff. And then, like, yeah. he was like, oh, not going to lie, what you said really hit home. And I'm like, yeah, man, because, like, if you're in one side, you can't have an open mind. 
you know, you need right. to have both perspectives. So it's like, yeah, you know, Trump does bad things, Trump does good things. And it's like you have to like accept them totally in order to be yeah. like yeah. adaptable. What were you saying? No, no, no. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, there's you really you got to look at it like the whole the whole picture, right? Um, not just like one thing and then you categorize them as only that. Like people are, uh, you know, not black and white. Totally, yeah. So that's that's the thing that, like, there even, I mean, I I wa- I've been watching where he's not doing anymore. I was watching all the Trump stuff and mm-hmm. like Trump conferences, and there are like certain things in there like that is, uh, like factual with like China and things like that that he has said. Uh, but I don't like people tend to forget what it was like before Trump. And a lot of that stuff was true with China, right? Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. But, but right, totally. But but that's what I'm saying. It's like if you're like one side or the other, then you're going to think everything he says is like negative, you know. But see, this, but this is also what happens here because it's, people do tend to choose sides and tend to only focus on certain facts that they uh, view as uh, as a good thing. So, for instance, like. Anything that Trump does with if he attacks Iran or anything that comes to light, right? Like all right. the bombs he's doing or something, mm-hmm. just because they hate him. But then, if when Obama was doing that, none of that was mentioned. Yeah, totally, exactly. Because it's like the the halo effect, right? So it's like everything they do must be good, you know? Yeah, like right right now, actually, right now is like the exact time with with Joe Biden. He's got like a sexual assault. Someone had uh, came out. Oh no way! Okay. <laughs> yeah. And uh, only now it was out for like a few weeks. Only now the media is a little bit talking about it, but it wasn't being talked about at all for like a few weeks, like in the beginning when it came out. And if you remember, there was like a judge that Trump had chose, like Kavanaugh, and like they had a whole hearing. Okay. Uh, and they're like, oh, all um, what were they saying? Like, oh, all females should be believed, or it should go through like due process. Right. So like they they wouldn't put him on the Supreme court judge, uh, at first, like until, uh, like they ha- went through all this hearing and it's like, but this person is coming out against Joe Biden and everybody's like, uh, uh it's not true or, um, she's lying or something like that. Hmm. So it's just because he's the Democrat and we can't have this thing against when you're running against the, tr- uh, right. Republic. Oh, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. yeah totally. No. You know, like that's because because it'll it'll hurt our image. You know, I was just watching um, Hunger Games and I watched the whole the whole series, and I was like, this is like a perfect marketing political overview of our society. Yeah. You know, like exactly what you're saying right now. It's like we can't the whole thing. Like, so the first one was like, yeah, it was about the Hunger Games, and then as it progressed, it was more about propaganda. They even started calling it like we got to film more propos. You know, because mm-hmm. like we yeah. got to like spin the image in a specific way and i was like that's like right. what what you're describing right now it's like we can't have him like looking negative in that light you know right yeah 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 and that's exactly what was happening and nobody was talking about it just because it would be bad for his polling numbers you might lose it's like right just because of that i just like but then maybe he's as bad as trump yeah totally yeah i, I agree i agree yeah, yeah. But yeah. W- what is uh uh, actually, I actually want to get an update on the Bernie Sanders thing. When I saw that he stopped running, I was like, oh, no. I really thought he was going to win yeah. it this time. Uh, again, there was – he he still should have stayed on, but there's a lot of um, – I, I, I think there was so much backlash against him. Just like, oh, he's already in the lead. Like, he should just drop out. Why are you not dropping out? Like, there's so much of that against Who, Bernie? him. Bernie? Yeah. He wasn't in the lead like after Super Tuesday. He was not in the lead. Okay. Um, Joe Biden was so really Biden. Yeah, Damn. There, there, there's there's like it's I can really get into it, but it's it's a really long process to talk about because it's like uh, why did he lose Super Tuesday and then I think like Elizabeth Warren was still in the race while well, the other ones uh, like dropped out and they gave their endorsement to Biden. So those states helped out Biden. Oh, and I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was a it collusion. Was a, it was a game that was played really well. Like, what did Biden give those two, the, like, give the other two, like, uh, people that were running? What did they? 
like what did he you know um it, did he give him a cabinet position if he wins right, or like right, something right, right. Like that? but but that's so, what i'm saying about hunger games man it's like all this yeah. stuff that we see is like so superficial like at the level of of where we are as see like you know when people talk about the illuminati you know and they're yeah. like oh like this is it it I, there's it's not like an actual illuminati i, I don't believe in that but what i believe yeah. in is like the things that we're doing by mm-hmm. like they they become the de facto illuminati you know just just like listening to this like oh yeah i'm going to give you this position if you give me your endorsement and it's like it's like yeah, yeah that's that's some illuminati stuff you know but like we don't call it the Illuminati, but that's just how politics is run. You yeah, know? exactly. And yeah. again, that's really if you pay attention to politics, you would know that. But people don't, right? And <laughs> actually, I mean, in general, people don't really care about politics, so they only get those headlines. Right. Totally. They totally. Get the real story, and then maybe like after some, after like, you know, if it goes down the line, and then you all this news comes out, you think it's shocking, but it wasn't shocking at the time, you know. Right, totally, totally, totally. Yeah, yeah. 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 You, you know, um, it's funny. It's funny, like, speaking, this is a great segue into, like, online learning, but um, through the use of the internet, like, if you're, if you're listening to this and you're like, oh, how do you guys know so much about these topics, right? But it's like, well, first of all, I think that everyone is intelligent on whatever topic interests them. You know, like, if we were talking about, like, um, I don't know, some stupid TV show, we would have watched like every single TV show, analyzed everything, you know. But like, that's not what our where our interests lie, you know. Yeah. And like, yeah. like well, listening we to, you tend like, to we do that. We do do that. I mean, we, it's not stupid. Though. No, no, but yeah, totally, totally. We we do talk about, it, but it's like, what I'm saying is like, people are it, like, oh, you're smarter than another person, but it's like not really. It just the interests lie in different areas, you know. Yeah. If you were interested, are, yeah, totally right. Yeah. yeah. And and yeah, you. Would, I agree. And you would go out of your way to find out the information of what it is you're interested on. So, like, you, like, I'm not very interested in politics. I'm, I'm interested in, like, the grander scale of how it works, but the micro scale, like, that's why I ask you these questions, right? And, like, you, you analyze it, you know? And, like, for me, it's, like, martial arts, spirituality, all that stuff. But it's, it's all propagated through the internet, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, like. Yeah, I I didn't go to school for that. That's, that's what I was about to say. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Like, like yeah. me taking photos, that's me watching, like, YouTube videos, like, DIY mm-hmm. stuff and being like, oh, I could do that, you know? Right. And, like, yeah. I, I feel like what this whole COVID thing is showing us is what was going on all along, you know? It's, like, I posted this, vid- I posted this like, picture. Like, so we're, we're having, like, Zoom conferences at work. Right. Mm-hmm. And it's like, it was funny to me because I was like, everybody thinks this is so innovative and new. But if you were in the technosphere, you've been doing this for like Discord, you know, like, like Twitch streaming. Like, come on, what are you guys talking about? Like, this is, this is so basic, you know? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, just turn on the camera. Okay. Uh, okay. Sign up for a membership. Oh, how do I sign up for, oh, how, how do I download this app? You know what I mean? It's like, it's like, <laughs> it was there the whole time. Just nobody was using it because right. only, the people in the technosphere were up to date on that stuff. You know, I mean, like Twitch, gamers. Yeah, Twitch was here. We could have been already doing online learning. I mean, we tend to do online learning. There are some people put up some of their streams are about teaching people about other whatever topic that they're interested in. Right, a hundred percent. And I was thinking about this too. Like, so I spend like like hours of my day, like equivalent to like at, I watch at least like one, at least a minimum one podcast per day. Right. Mm -hmm. And just like a bunch of interviews in between, because that's what interests me. And like I was thinking about it. That's like a that's like going to a lecture for university, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And and it's like because you have like especially with the Joe Rogan experience, you have these like experts that he brings on. And then what they do is they talk about their chosen field for three hours, you know? And you're like, Mm -hmm. this is almost better than a lecture because they're not sticking to a specific like doctrine of study they're like telling you what's really going on and what they really think like science experts you know yeah this isn't like yeah. it's not like oh this is the class on you know uh like uh let's get an example like like this isn't microbiology one you know we're gonna talk about everything that i know up to my expertise and how it relates you know 
So if right. you're if you're a big picture thinker, this is great for you. But if you're like a macro scale thinker, then like you need those individual classes. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? But like, yeah. but it's like, like the way we define education previous to the COVID thing, I think it's way mm-hmm. different than education going forward. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. And, and like, I really because I heard this. A while ago, it's like we're entering the age of enlightenment, you know, Aquarius sign, blah, blah, like a b- bunch of like spiritual mumbo jumbo. But but if you actually look at it, it's like, no, the Internet really did provide us with understanding, you know, mm-hmm. understanding, connectivity, all of these things. You know, we can run entire businesses and economies online, you know. Yeah. Do, do you see the NASA thing where um, they're they're like doing the rover? They're like manning the rover from her kitchen or something like that. No, I did not see that. Okay, it was like it was unwired. I didn't read the full article, but I, I was like checking out the picture and like, you know, the headline, whatever, as as because it doesn't interest me as much as it would for you. You'd probably <laughs> read the article, I'm like, no. But they're saying like um NASA piloting from home or something like that. And I was like, oh. Yeah, of course. It was like pretty basic, just like, you know, it's like a engineer who's using her kitchen counter and has like all these like computers set up to like mm. man this this rover on Mars. And it's like, yeah, we're such a digital digital species now. Right. You know? The only thing there is uh, security. Oh, true, yeah, true. Yeah, I see that. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Well, um yeah. But do do you feel like I guess the negative to that would be the disinformation that we were we were talking about earlier because you don't know who to trust, you know? Yeah, yeah, and that's what tends to happen a lot, I mean, especially in these days. Yeah, and, and like, what if, like, the grid shuts off, too? That's another problem. Do you know how, like, they they back up the Internet? Like, how does that work? I, I'm not too sure. I, I, I heard it's, like, multiple, like, you have different locations around the world with different servers holding different information, you know? But, mm-hmm. the, but like... If that went down, that would be an issue. Yeah. I don't know if we talked about this before in the last podcast, but it, it's like it's a good time to bring it up again. But I think the reason why they're able to do this whole quarantine this time is because during the SARS outbreak, our our like infrastructure wasn't good enough to run businesses remotely. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I think they would have done the same thing. You know, if then I, I saw that like um, 65 percent of cases are are um, recovering. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. So like. So it's like, was it as bad as we thought? Did we jump the gun? Like, you'll never know. Right. Uh, I, I have some topic. I have some thoughts on that. Oh, OK. Yeah. You want to share? I'm very curious. Well, yeah. So I look at Sweden. I was watching some things recently, or this week about it. Okay. And Sweden is doing a whole... They're not doing anything what other countries are doing. Uh, Basically, their economy is still open. Stores are open. Restaurants are open. They're just following the social distancing. Schools are open. Oh, no way. Uh, Yeah. Uh, It's just like if you're... What they're suggesting is if you can work from home, work from home. If you... uh, Like, you know, don't go meet your, like, grandparents and stuff. Uh, or kind of like keep them safe, right? Uh, right, right, totally. Because majority of the deaths are um, elderly are, and sick. Are elder, yeah, hmm. yeah. So those are the only ones you really need to protect. But in general, what's happening there is they they still have they still have cases. But I think what they're going for is more like herd immunity. Oh, okay. So they're they're just waiting it out so that everyone gets it. Yeah, over time, and depends on as as, as more people get immune to it it then it won't spread right? right 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 it's sort of like the whole idea of we all wear masks kind of thing yeah or, or, or like wear a mask in that situation that's uh that's so fascinating so like everything's still running as normal they're just like following different protocols of like social distancing yeah hmm. yeah and i no country is doing that um but Everybody, they do have a bit higher number of cases and higher number of deaths than their countries beside who are following the social distancing. But the thing is, 
which phase are they at and only we'll only know that maybe in a couple months or so oh, which like, you mean sweden which phase is sweden at? yeah okay yeah cool. which phase sweden is at are they at the end of the phase and that's their like max number uh and other countries will continue to add more number to it because if you social distance or stay at home it's like it it'll spread slowly it'll mm. still spread but it'll spread slowly but you'll do get uh you'll still get that high number so, eventually so how do you well, how do mm-hmm. we know about like the you know how they're like oh we're hitting our peak yeah is is that like a like how does how does that work so it's just like the maximum number of people that can get it is the peak no. and then it just goes oh, no no, no. Yeah. that's not no it, they're in this uh what we're doing right now with staying at home and stuff the peak they're seeing is mainly the number of cases that's coming oh it doesn't okay, mean okay. that number of cases if we so like if we open up now right now and as normal as it was before the number will go up again okay because more it'll more people will catch it right because there's more people had stayed home right right totally yeah yeah yeah. yeah. so, so th- that's what i'm wondering too i'm like like can this actually be the real peak because if we open up like yeah I'll, everyone's back outside it's gonna so raise that's why again. They, yeah that's why they want to especially in ontario they want to do it in phases but that's where they have to see like okay when we do uh, phase one style of opening they monitor the number of cases and if it's going up then they'll have to uh stop like uh, go back to lockdown again for a little bit i don't know i don't know what the because they still haven't started the phases i believe and i don't know when they will start in ontario yeah yeah but i saw that thing like uh ford was saying how you know businesses get ready we're gonna open up soon you know yeah within like what number is he waiting for to do that like if if we're getting only 200 cases a day is that the number he wants before we slowly like do the phase one opening right then go on to phase two like it'll be like phase one for two or three weeks phase two it, 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 like each category fits a certain different sort of things that are open oh, um, but okay. things like even even on, uh, it's it, the total is up to phase three and if everything goes through it's like phase three should be in like july or so oh no uh, way yeah july or august but even after phase three, like things like, um, uh, um, uh, like like uh, sports and stuff, that mm-hmm. will be that that even under phase three, that's still closed indefinitely. Even Interesting. Okay. Okay. So 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 speaking of sports, so uh, going back to this online learning thing, because because you just triggered me um, on a <laughs> thought. So like a lot of like yoga studios, martial arts studios, they're doing this like online learning like through Zoom. Yeah. You know and. And then I see them like charging for like obviously no you you need you need to do something for a business right to for it to survive mm-hmm. totally makes sense yeah. yeah you know but like it it almost seems like with those intangible um like the, no sorry those tangible uh, classes where you need like hands on training like I I personally refuse to do any like Zoom jujitsu stuff because it's like it it makes no sense. I just watch like what I've done instead is I just started watching the Gracie combatives again, because like, at least theirs is very methodical, you know, like mm-hmm. it's very like, like they, yeah. they planned yeah. for it to be online education. Whereas like right. right now it's like, everyone's just catching up and what they're trying to do is fill these, like these like um, filler, filler episode classes, you know, like if you're watching an anime, it's like, Oh, there's a filler episode. Yeah, no, it's like, yeah. Cause they, they jumped into it. They don't know exactly what, or how uh, to best use these tools. That's what uh, I'm saying. Exactly. Totally. Yeah. And it, it's like, I feel like this is the impetus for further online education, but mm-hmm. like we're in such like a rudimentary stage right now that it's like, if you're a techno sphere person, you see how ridiculous this seems. It's like, why would I learn from this? Right. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, like not to knock those people, like obviously you need a way to pull in income, but like, Unless it's like a VR training kind of thing, you know, like no, uh, no, I understand. I think I think in they're trying to find ways to survive through this because they are going to be impacted hugely. And even after that, it's like, can we really have people, or will people come back? Totally, uh, to do jujitsu or any, any other sports because it's everyone. It's all close contact, right? 
So so that, that's what triggered me with your like phase three thing. You're like, oh, sp- uh, sports are indefinitely still closed. And it's like, yeah, like gyms and like all that stuff. Like, because that's the quickest way to transmit it, right? Like such close contact. Even those yoga studios that we go to, you know, you're like right next to another person. Yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah. So they'll have limit the number of people or you know what i mean like cut down the instead of having 50 in a class you need to be social distancing in the class so maybe 25 a class like things like they would have to really cut down even in, even for restaurants you would have to do the same thing totally 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 so, but but like at least with those like yoga martial arts, um yoga restaurants but like with martial art that you have you can social distance but with martial arts you you need to have physical yeah. contact with another right person. yeah that's right, you know? that's right. So it makes you think, is it like, is this the end of like, like, is, is it is it dying now, you know, academies? Because like, you can't pay for your school. You know, yeah. They all closed down. Yeah. yeah so that they, they will be impacted a lot. And I, I think many will not survive. Mm, yeah, I agree. I, I, I think that that might happen. Yeah. It's it's funny because like you need to be so forward thinking in life. Unless like, they, oh, yeah. yeah, sorry, sorry, yeah. Unless they again, they had, if if those online things or if they figure out a way to do it in a way that is engaging and teaching or something yeah. that people want to pay for, then that's the only way that they can continue to- going on. Totally, and yeah. and I feel like the only like you have to be so forward thinking in life. Because you have to mm-hmm. accept it, it's sort of like the left and the right thing we we're talking about with politics. It's like. You 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 have to look at it and take it. It's like the Jeet Kune Do of um, of life. You have to take that philosophy of like accept what is necessary, discard what is not, and then add what is uniquely your own. You know, right? Yeah. That that's yeah. like a Bruce Lee philosophy, and like I find that like the only people that did it the best because they knew about it, and like. Like Henry Gracie, I was listening to his podcast with uh, Andy Stumpf, the former Navy SEAL, and he was saying mm-hmm. that like it's funny to see all the hate that they got eleven years ago when they started online school, <laughs> right? right? And then now in this COVID time, it's like people are trying to be them, you know. But it's right. like, but we spent eleven years breaking down our system in a way that's it's a linear progression towards achieving like certification. Right. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, whereas now, like, jujitsu schools, they have to analyze their entire curriculum and they have to be like, okay, how do we linearly progress someone? Mm -hmm. That's, again, that's why I don't want to take the Zoom class because it's like, this isn't going to go towards, like, my achievement or my learning. Like, we're using dummies, you know? Yeah. So it's like, you don't have a live partner to fight back with you. What are you going to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it doesn't really work out that way. Yeah. And then I've been seeing like all these other stuff too, like these pad work things. So like you're on Zoom and then they'll hold the pad up and then you punch the pad that they held up and it's like, but there's no like feedback, there's well, no strength. <laughs> you know what I mean? They have yeah. like, it, it's like, it's, it almost became like you're the video game now. You're playing like some VR video game where it's like your hands yeah. are up, you know? Yeah. So so That's why, right. like instead of doing that, why don't I just buy a VR headset? Because like you're, you're going to charge me an annual membership. Why don't I just spend that money on a VR headset and play like the punch them out game right you know what right. i mean because there's that there's that like boxing game and it's like oh, you're essentially doing the same thing there's no feedback on how hard i'm hitting i'm just like tapping these like subjective mm. spots at least with a video game it's like when you hit it it lights up and it's like yeah you hit it whereas like if they hold it up and like left it's like did you really catch the left or you know what i'm saying like it's, right, yeah, it, yeah. it seems yeah. ridiculous and- to me I mean, it even looks ridiculous. It like, looks ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. Like you, you have like a computer up and like not knocking it. Like, of course, like you need a way to make business, but like it no, just, I get it's it. rudimentary. Yeah, yeah I, I I understand why they're doing it, but it's like you got to find a way to – like what's the best way to use online and not not silly things like that. I think that's a bit silly, but yeah. T- totally. So, and, and it's funny to see like people who are like in the technosphere progressive, they understand where things lie. So like, for, for example, um, uh, there's this thing called, uh, I forgot what it's called, but it's like, it's like at, in, in all workplaces, it's like a skill development. You know what I'm saying? Like you're, you're building your, do you do that work? Like you, it's like, 
they'll pay for something for you to learn so that you can increase your skill? Uh, no. I don't no? Okay. okay, so maybe it's like a progressive <laughs> thing for progressive companies. But so, like, there's, like, skill development thing, right? And, like, the hardest thing to mm-hmm. get online because you and i've been learning online for some time so like when i was asked like what do you want to do as like a skill development thing i was like i want to learn this which is master class right because master class is all about like like concepts you're thinking outside the box i don't need to know how to do menial tasks i just need to know how to put those together in a specific way you know and that's it's all that's right. all conceptual you know what i'm mm-hmm. saying because like because then the other option was paying for, like, this online learning thing. And I looked at it, and I was like, I could YouTube these. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like yeah. – but but it's like like things like LinkedIn Learning. That's That was the other thing. It's like lynda.com. And what it is is they just show you how to technically do a specific thing. You know? It's like, okay, if you want to increase brightness, here's the brightness video. You know, something like that. But it's like mm-hmm. I could just YouTube how do you increase brightness – on yeah. my Photoshop, you know what I mean? Like, it's but that's the rudimentary thing. It's like, why would anyone pay for something so accessible through other means? Right, right. Do you, do you know what I'm saying? So like that. That's yeah. how I feel about these Zoom classes. It's like, it's you're so down the sphere. You need to catch up before it's even worth investing yeah, time no, and money. Yeah, in. yeah, yeah. I mean, but they're a bit desperate too, right? No, so, I agree with you. Yeah, yeah. That's 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 the hard part, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, oh yeah, you were saying? No, no, nothing, nothing. Go ahead. And, and then I think it's funny too because like, so like if you look at these like podcasts and like these these interviews, because I, I know you watch like Elon Musk stuff, right? Or like you're watching mm-hmm. some SpaceX stuff. You're, you're watching the SpaceX presentation. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And it's like for you, that's like your lecture, right? But then you do the supplementary reading, you know, like you do the homework. You know, it's like, okay, well, what's this? And I'll read more about these articles, you know? Or, like, for me, it's like, okay, they mentioned this book. I'll buy this book on Amazon. I'll read the book. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's like I feel like online learning is so – but there's, like, a level, you know? Like, you can't become a doctor online. That's that's way too hard, you know? You need to, like (laughs) – like, if you're going to go to professional school, I think you need classrooms. But I think, think, like – yeah, exactly. I think I think some things require classrooms, like anything that relates to lab work or something like that. Totally, yeah, yeah, yeah that, for you sure. You can't do that on, so you have to do that in class. Yeah. Right, right, totally, totally. Um, I guess like minus lawyers, I guess if you're going to be a lawyer, you could do that online, or like I mean, you already, MBA. You already can. Yeah, yeah. Like already, you can do your own. You can be your own lawyer, right? True, true, true. Yeah, totally, totally, totally. But yeah, like there, there is still that distinction. Like I don't want, you know, if you're listening to this I and you're like, oh, I can just learn right. online. It's like, no, no, there's still like value right. in, in class. But I think maybe that's the way around it. Like with this whole COVID scare, it's like you just, you only bring back classrooms that are essential, you know? Yeah. Right. I, th- I think what we're learning is like how technological we are. And then I feel like post COVID, people are going to be like, why am I commuting? You know what I mean? Like, I'm spending so much time, unless you have to, like, like, there are certain things you can't do, like, online. You know, like, like, like your job, right? You you need, like, a sample or something. You know, you need yeah. to, like, physically, you need the instruments. You don't have the instruments. So, like, I feel like that's essential. But, like, like conceptual things, like building businesses online and, like, like the stuff I do, creative right. stuff, it's more, yeah. it's more, like, agreeable to online work you know i'm really Mm -hmm. excited to see how this is going to change the future landscape of both education and businesses you know yeah but um but do what kind of impact do you think like i watched this video yesterday tara was showing me this video of um this little kid asking his dad to read him uh the story of 2020 did you do you see that video no. Oh, it's re- it's like going on. It's like viral. So like basically he talks about like how prior to 2020, it's like in a fairy tale format. Like it's, it's like he's right. like reading a narrative to a, a kid. So it's like a poem. But uh, it's like how before 2020, we were so obsessed with like the wrong things. And then after 2020, we're changing our mindset, you know. 
mm-hmm. toward towards like what's important in life. And uh, yeah, Tara's like, asked me like, oh, do you think this will like stay? And I was like, it depends on how long it takes. I know I know you and I talked about this before, but like, yeah, it would be really sad to see all of it revert exactly to normal. You know, it'd be so anticlimactic. <laughs> right. We spent yeah. all this time like learning how to do things and like building up systems, and then to just go back to like the straight nine to five. No, I, you know, I, I, I don't think it'll ever go back to the way it exactly was. They will either, wherever things can be implemented for, uh, at online sort of stuff, will be going in that direction. If they haven't yet, they will do that in the future. Right. Like right. That, I think that's the, there is, of course, there's going to be a lesson learned from this. And I think that um, that is one of those things. Going online. Uh, especially for, as, yeah, especially for businesses. Yeah. yeah. Th- that that could be like such a fascinating reality where like, like I was always so um, like enthralled by like going to Thailand and seeing those like digital nomads, the people that mm-hmm. they have these like cafes that are super fast internet. And then like they'll serve you food throughout the day. You could like just work there. It's like workspaces basically like Toronto workspaces. Right. Yeah. But like, mm-hmm. um, but, yeah. uh, you sorry. sorry yeah, internet, I, you know. Like I just thought like, I think what also might change is like, they will probably more implement like more um, like speed up to figure like figuring out how to, like to uh, for robots to replace human workers. I was up. I was about to. Say, okay, wait, hold on. We'll we'll, we'll get to there. We'll get to there. I was going to talk about that next. Okay. So okay. Um. So it's funny. You're like we were thinking along the exact same lines. So um. It's funny. So like so with those like digital nomads, all you really need is a high speed internet. And I built my entire like like career off of being able to work off of a laptop anywhere, you know, just right. a backpack and a laptop. That's all I need. And I can get stuff done for you. And that's like, because I, I always felt like it's important to be nomadic. Like, obviously if you're doing your job, you can't do that. But like in the creative world, you can do that, you yeah. know? And yeah. I feel like we're going to take a lesson from this. And I think it will be really interesting to see in the future that people are like different parts of the world working on the same company. You know, the only issue is like taxes because like, mm-hmm. right, like employment law, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. Like you still have to figure out like the government side of it. But like, I think that'd be really fascinating in the future. OK, so let's talk about the automation. So mm-hmm. uh, I, I was saying with that whole thing, like, oh, do you think with well, the question, like, do you think we'll forget? And I was like, um, depends on how long it lasts. But also, I think we're making a really strong case for UBI. Right. And. Right. And, then, and then Tara's like, oh, but like then people will be lazy. And I'm like, yeah, but at least they'll have money to be lazy because everyone's lazy. Like not everyone, but like we all want to be lazy. But if you give us like lazy, but you have to work, you're going to get disgruntled people. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like if you, if you, I think the ideal future scenario would be like we all get UBI. So that's enough to pay for food and shelter. But if you want luxuries, like if you want to travel, you need to get a job. If you want like this coat, you need to get a job. Mm-hmm. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, maybe maybe just lessen the amount of work, but take the burden off of having to make a set amount of money. Right. Yeah, I can see that. Um, right. Mm-hmm. And and like so like. Because she was saying that, like, what they were seeing is that people were quitting their job because they would just go on. Like, they wouldn't accept their positions back because they would just choose the $2,000 a month. And it's like, yeah. yeah, of course. Why would you not? If you are if you have a trash job, you're, you're, you're commuting. Let's say you work at, like, a Tim Hortons downtown. That's the only one that will hire you. But you live in Brampton. So you're, you're commuting over an hour to work a minimum wage job. Just take the UBI, you know, that stress level that you're putting somebody under is going to make them snap eventually. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm working 12 hours. I have a kid at home. I got to commute an hour and a half to get to this thing. Like, what's the point? Yeah, exactly. Right. And I feel like it's like a powder keg in society if you keep making people go through that. But if you give them like a basic amount of money like 
just don't take that job, you know, because automation. So now go, going to automation, I saw on Yup that exists. So like, like another thing, Tara was like, oh, but like, can robots really replace us? And I was like, yeah, they can do everything. So then I saw um, this video of this machine that was making fried rice all by itself. <laughs> and I'm right. like, you're replacing chefs now. <laughs> yeah. Right. We're doing. So. Yeah. yeah. So like generally, like, uh, I mean, that is the next step eventually, I guess, to replace chefs, but, um, or even like, like uh, where they make pizza too, right? That can be done very systematically by that, a robot. That, that, it's all totally, perfect. totally. So, but generally there'll be a lot of these, a lot of the jobs that are out there are very um, like labor intensive jobs. So like mm -hmm. those ones will be shifting into robot or automation. So yeah. And it's like, it's like, what are you going to make? And they make up the most workforce, right? The most percentage of workforce. I believe. Right. So, totally. Yeah, yeah. So that, that is i mean it's already happening we already do that in 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 if you've seen how much has really changed in like the auto auto industry and stuff like that since like from 50 years ago you can see that we are already always been headed this way to automation right and um it's funny because like uh, i was watching that elon musk interview the first one on lex freeman um, mm -hmm. And he he had the greatest analogy, and I was like, "This is exactly it." So he was saying that like uh, fifty years ago, we used to have elevator operators, right? Right. And it seemed normal. It's like, yeah, of course, like you need a person to operate this thing. Then they started to find out that it's actually better if the computer does it because there's less error involved with the elevator operator. So he's saying like self driving cars is just going to become the new normal because. We're going to think in like 100 years when self-driving cars are here, it's like, why would anybody drive a death machine? You're, you're driving like a two-ton truck that you can swerve off the road and kill anyone. Like this should be yeah. automated. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We tend to uh, – we get used to the norm at the time and don't realize like, uh, w like where – or there are people like that that decide or think about like where we can fix and um, like be more efficient. And yeah, that's tend to. to it's, it's not forward thinking enough. It, it's like, like I was saying, yeah. like you need to be forward thinking in life with like the Henry Gracie thing, right? Like he knew mm -hmm. that online was the future. So he spent 11 years building it. Now everyone's trying to catch up. So it's like Tesla. I mean, not Tesla. Uh, Elon Musk knows that like self-driving cars are the future. Now everyone's trying to catch up. You know, it's like you yeah. you have to go in this way you know right but you have to be like you have to be willing to go out on a risk to go for what you believe in because it's it's obvious you know like mm -hmm. like he was asked like by lex like does it like does it seem like it'll actually go this way and he's like it to me it's game set match like there's no way it's not going this way and i was like yeah i could i could see it with that analogy of like the elevator i was like of course of course it would go this way you know, yeah, and uh, um, so yesterday when we brought like Athena to the vet, I was looking because it was like in a factory area, which is kind of weird mm -hmm. for a hospital to be. But I was watching because we had to wait like two hours. I was watching the factory people; they were still working, like they were loading trucks. And I was watching like this old person pushing the cart, and I was like, "This is so inefficient!" Like yeah. you have you have an old person who's like working off of their their own level of energy to fill this truck mm -hmm. why don't you just get a machine to do it <laughs> you know yeah and you'll lose less product because like what if the old person steals something or drops something you know like the robot's not going to steal anything or drop anything and they don't need to stop for lunch break Ex they don't exactly. need to go home at night they don't need to sleep <laughs> yeah. So, and, yeah right so like i feel like if the world goes in that direction of like more and more automation, which it inevitably will. What we're going to have is a society of like thinkers or gamers, <laughs> like one of those, you know, you'll, right. you'll have like less disgruntled people and you'll have a bunch of people that are just like, like learning things online or gaming online or like, you know, because still there's going to be people who need to build these robots, you know, like I don't think jobs will be obsolete. I just think they'll just change towards more like white collar jobs, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like a highly, like, unless they create AI, 
which are they're saying like, you know, if we create AI, then they will think for us. They'll have the algorithm to figure out the best ad, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But have I mean, you been that's... watching more Westworld? Oh, yeah, I'm done. I'm caught up, fully caught up. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But I'm waiting. We're going to do that recap episode once the whole season is no, done. No, no, yeah. I, I didn't. Yeah, I know, I know. I just wanted to, because you mentioned like the AI thing, and I was. That's where I got it from. That's where I got it from. I was watching Westworld and I was like, oh, dude, this is like, this is the future as well. Like, if you actually figure out the algorithm to make a human in the exact Mm -hmm. manner, then you've like, you've cracked the the code and like, but it, it seems like by watching Westworld, it seems like our DNA is our algorithm. To me, at least. You know, because like, yeah. Like it has the baser basics or like the, the foundation of who we are. And then from there, the algorithm like, like proliferates. Th- think of it like, um, like a, to the exponent of two, you know, like four to the exponent of two infinity, you know, you take, you look at it, it's like, it's just number four, but then you put an exponent to it and then it just like can keep going, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So that's how I see this, the DNA. It's like you have the very basic and then you just put an exponent to it and like however it manifests in the world will manifest in the world. But it's not governed by random because we can still calculate four to the exponent of two billion. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Which is essentially determinism again. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll get more into that. I guess, I guess next. <laughs> uh, when is when is the last Westworld thing? I, I'm not sure if it's today, but uh, oh, I, say word, I, really? I, I'm not sure. I think so. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Excellent. So no if it's po- today, we could. All right, all right. So if it is today, <laughs> if it is today, yeah. we'll do the recap next week. We'll like talk about Westworld. But if it's not, um, then yeah, we'll talk about something else. Yeah. <laughs> did, yeah. did, do you see the uh, Last of Us? Before we end off, did you see the Last of Us uh, two? They post that thing about. Um, it's a hundred gigabytes. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a lot, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Because like I saw it, and I was like, oh, that's a really big number. But I was like, but is Call of Duty more? I at, the sure. at, at the I moment, I believe it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, excited. If, if you were it, if you were getting it in disc form, it would be two discs for Last of Us. Really? Okay. Wow. Okay. So it's going to be like an epic game. Uh, yeah. The reason they had to um, push or get out the release date because some leaks happened. Oh, and... oh no way. Interesting. Yeah, so... See, I've I, been saying I, with... I heard that. I heard that's so funny. I heard that too. Like the same person that was hating on um, the Final Fantasy VII. They're like, oh, like Last of Us 2 leaked. And I was like, Maybe I, I was waiting for you to tell me because I was like, I don't really trust this. Really, I don't really know your level of like exploration. Maybe you just read a headline like I did. I can read headlines right. too, but like I'm waiting for you to read more into it and to tell me. You but know? even even with the leaks, you don't get the whole story, and I do want to just experience the whole story, um, right? Like you'll get certain ideas, but you don't know if those are final products, right? But there's leaks, yeah. Oh really? Eh. So when when was it slated to? come out well it was supposed to be like two weeks before the current release date anyways so they're just like oh wait two weeks before or two weeks after yeah. no it would have been in june i believe this is coming out in july so wait it would have been huh? original release date was june end of june no so no i saw i saw an ad now and it's like seven weeks away till last month. no 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 I'm saying before, okay, before the COVID, the original release date was June. Once COVID happened, uh, they said it's they're, uh, it's not, they pushed the uh, release date look to like an indefinite date or like we don't know the date. Okay. And, then, and then the leaks happened and then they're like, okay, we have to shift around because there's two games or two big games that are being released. So one month after each other now. Oh, well, um, what are the two games? The Ghost of Tsushima, which will be... Oh, no way, yeah. Yeah. Wait, is this... Uh, what date is the actual one? I don't remember. What, what are we talking about? For Last of Us 2? Yeah. I think it said Jul- June 17th. That's when they're releasing it. Okay, yeah. So, yeah. So, it would have been out in May. 
in the original than it was because of the leak they had to like okay we're we gotta have to we have to release the game now um so they got it it's coming out in 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 uh june 17th and then one month after that will be ghost of shishima okay okay so we we would have essentially like been experiencing last of us this month yeah Ah, fascinating that's cool okay yeah so I guess they, you know, everyone's working from home anyways to work on the games. That's it. Oh, wow. So, like, that must be so hard, you know? Like, uh, they were already, I think they were, like, basically, they were basically done the game. The basic, what they only fixing, they're fixing is, like, the bugs and, like, things like that. So that's the... Oh, okay. So it's, like, it's just, like, um, tedious stuff. Yeah. You don't need, like, a studio and, like... Like you're not like filming anything anymore. No, the, all the filming is was done a while ago. Oh, okay, all right. So you're just like essentially editing now, like yeah, post production. Yeah, cool. All right, sick. Well, we're looking forward to that one. Can't wait. I'm trying to beat this Final Fantasy VII before um, <laughs> Ghost of uh, not Ghost um, Last of Us Last. comes out. But Ghost yeah. of Tsushima looks really, really good too. I know we were saying that, like, the way the grass moves and, like, the environment, it looks very, like... And I heard, you said it was an open world, too, right? Yeah. So it's, like, you could just be essentially living in the feudal Japan era. Yeah. Yeah. I'm stoked. Uh, I, I finished uh, Horizon today. Or yesterday. Yesterday. Oh, nice. Okay, cool. And was it everything you expected? Yeah, it was good. It's It was, again, about... Um... It was a good story. It was about like uh, social uprising. Yeah, but like who she was, like what, where, why was she there? It was again. It was like um, environmental, like uh, green energy. So, like we created like robots that were just destroying the planet. Ah. And we had to reset it, kind of in a way to program it with this. Yeah. You know they they were saying like if you want to look at where society is you look at art you mm-hmm. know and like with Final Fantasy 7 with Hunger Games with that the game Horizon it's like you're all pointing to what it is that's like affecting society you know what I'm saying like you're you're doing a social commentary which is yeah. fascinating to me because it's like you like the truly free person is the artist because they're the ones who are just talking mm-hmm. about, you know, the, the ills of society, but which is interesting. Cause like in V for Vendetta, that's why they, they blocked everything. Remember they're like no art pieces. Right. Right. Yeah. Because like, yeah, you don't want people to think what they're doing is bad. That's another good movie. Like V for Vendetta. Awesome. Yeah. It's, it's also shifting people's minds with this, right? Subconsciously, consciously as well. Like with these types of stories. Yeah, totally, totally. Like, like, it, they really did shift a generation. Like, the way, I don't know about you, but at least the way I think, it was totally affected by, like, stuff that they put out during the time. Like, The Matrix, which was very, like, anti-establishment. Uh, mm-hmm. Final Fantasy VII, anti-establishment. You know what I mean? Like, dra- yeah. like anime stuff was like very anti-establishment it's it's really fascinating that like you really can shape an entire generation's thoughts through art yeah and that's why art needs to be silenced if you are um like banksy too right banksy does like a lot of street art that talks about like negativity within society so if you want to control the masses you control the artists because the artists will push the ideas out to people in a way that allows them to proliferate into actions. Yeah, yeah. Or, yeah, artists and, um, I mean, that's, that's a wide range, not just particularly art itself. Comedians are artists and things like that. No, yeah, totally. That's what I mean, yeah. Like, comedians are artists, too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, cool. All right, so until next week, uh, stay tuned. And if it is Westworld Ender, um, we'll talk about that next week. But definitely, if you haven't seen it, check out Westworld. I think that's how we ended the last one too. <laughs> Westworld is so good. It's like, I'm so sad it took me so long. Well, actually, no, I like it better because like, 
when you when you have everything and you can binge it, you get the storyline. Yeah. So like I remember when I was watching Hunger Games the first time, I was like, I don't really get what's going on. Like because there was like year gaps in between, so you're like, oh, what happened? And you'd have to like rewatch it, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But if you just watch right. it straight, which is what we did, it's like, oh man, the storyline's beautiful. You know, you see how oh, yeah. everything is linked together. So like with Westworld too, it's like like binging it, you see everything all at once. Mm-hmm. And it's great. Yeah. All right. 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 Yeah. All right. Till next week. Take it easy. Bye. Oh wait, wait. Uh, pick up stuff on Zenreal, uh, free radio. Give it a listen. <laughs> SG Podcast <laughs> is twenty percent off. Select items. Zenrealclothingco.com. Take it easy. Peace. Bye.